Hello there guys, welcome back to the classroom. This evening we're going to basically talk about annotations as promised last time. We are going to uh, learn how to put text inside of uh, the AutoCAD environment. Now it might look a little bit like uh, how you would do it in office applications but with a certain layer or level of uh, control okay let's just keep it at that so let's go into the classroom i have my timer right here and let's begin so to begin with when we're trying to put text inside of AutoCAD, we need to know while well, we can directly put text in by inputting text. So we can invoke text like that. And then there's a few options here. Start point of text, justify and style. But basically you choose a start point, specify the height, which is important because this text will be relative to all of your uh, other entities here. So let's just say we will use a height of, let's use visual feedback for now and use around this much height. And then rotation angle, let's set it to zero by uh, pressing spacebar or enter on that. And then now we can begin typing. As you can see, there is just a cursor there. There is no text box right now because we wanted a very straightforward text. So let's just type in something real quick. Yeah, uh, of course, when you're doing this in, uh, in CAD, you will probably want to make it all capital letters real quick. As you can see, uh, when you're editing text, your cursor becomes a selector. And if you change it to another text, uh, you can change that. And say continuous command until you let it go with another enter. And uh, this is the straightforward way. So it allows us to create a single line text. If we try to press enter while we're typing here, it doesn't uh, create another space where you could type. So how you type, how you create uh paragraphs here in CAD is a little bit different from um, say your desktop publishing programs like Word. But there is a way to do that also with multi-line text which is empty. Empty or M text. So specify first corner and then this one has a text box and you can uh, let's put it around the same size and as you can see there is a a ruler has appeared on top of our text box and if we do the same thing here change and then enter and let's put like so we can match it you can see that there is that difference there this being a multi-line text, uh, you can see that the uh, origin of the M text or where it's situated is here on top, whereas in a single line text, it's here at the bottom. It's sort of like justification like that, but a little bit different because this one has additional controls. 
while this may not be available in earlier versions of CAD, now it's pretty commonplace. Uh, almost all entities have internal controls, so you don't have to uh, type everything. Like, for example, here in mText, we have a an arrow here to adjust the width and an arrow here to adjust the height so for example we wanted a uh, more uh, if we needed to accommodate a longer word can just adjust this or if we reduce it you can see that the text changes dynamically okay So that's text and multi-line text. Now, of course, you're probably thinking, what if I don't want that font because I want something else, something more architectural. So that's when we go into text styles, which is actually supposed to be the very first one, uh, the very first annotative command that you get to be familiar with. And that is info by style the word the word style here we have a standard text type uh, and we have a bunch of controls here which are basically controls that you'd normally find in desk desktop publishing uh, programs let's create a new one so you can see how that goes and then we'll call it new style new style then say okay and then right now we have new style highlighted here we can choose a different font name let's go with country blueprint because that's very popular for architects who uh, who have the most basic set of fonts where is it? country blueprint there we go so as you can see here in the preview we have a very architectural looking text and then we have a font style here we can change it if there is an option if you have an installed bold font or italic font you can identify it here uh, when you click this annotative size you can see that you can match the text orientation to whatever layout you are uh, developing at the time because uh, text so, uh, autocad figured out that text needs to be dynamic enough that when you change layouts for example you need a bigger paper uh, you don't need to change the text heights. It does it dynamically. Uh, but practices here in the Philippines normally don't, don't bother anymore with annotative. They just specify different heights for different paper sizes. It's much easier to uh, relay it that way to draft people or people who will draft for them. Um, so let's identify a height. Let's say the height of text of this new style will be always 10 units. And then the width factor, we normally maintain it at that. Uh, effects if you want to if you want it upside down or backwards, if for example you're doing like an, an ambulance logo or something, you can do that. And you can push it uh, to oblique uh, turn like this or like this, uh, depending on the angle that you identify here. So right now we have country blueprint regular with a 10 unit height and a width factor of one so that maintains the width factor of the original font this is a like a percentage right here and then uh, let's set it to current 
So right now, if uh, we create text, this will be the one that will be used. So let's try it. As you can see here, it identifies that the textile new height will be used with a text height of 10. Uh, and mText is invoked automatically. And so there we have it. So that's just a like a typical a magnified version that will assist you because sometimes, for example, you're working with a big file uh, and you're typing out text, and you don't and you need to see uh, more of the environment rather than zoom into the text when you try to edit text nowadays it increases in size to at least be able to be intelligible enough for the user so and when you click out of it it returns to its normal size and you still have the controls here of the width and height like we identified before there we go. So we have those controls still available to us uh, because we invoke a multi-line text. Um, now there is a uh, special command wherein if you want to turn mirroring for text on, you can do that. So. Uh, like I said earlier, when you try to type ambulance, uh, you know how when you look at the ambulance in the rear view mirror, you can read it. Uh, it you need to type it in uh, mirror form in order to get that reflected properly. And how do we do that? requires that the mirror text toggle is on and that's invoked by mirrrtxt txt and then we can uh, zero is off and one is on so some toggles in autocad use this uh use this binary way of identifying it so let's turn it on and how that happens is for example we change this text here to ambulance and we mirror it with the mirror command you can see that it gets written uh, exactly mirrored like that if mirror text is off You can no longer do that if you mirror text, the text will remain the same. And this is useful for when you're uh, doing mirrored plans side by side and the text comes along with the mirror so it doesn't flip uh, when it moves to the other side. So that's... Uh, all the 12 minutes we have right now and i'll see you guys tomorrow okay take care see you